Caleb, you look so nice with your little shirt. You're so dressed up for dinner tonight. I want your hair tied up. Okay, go get some. Uh-oh, is it out? Oh, there it goes. You got it. Okay, good. We gotta hurry. We gotta hurry. You know us. We're always running late. Uh-oh. Hurry. Okay, we made it. We've been rushing around. We spent too much time at Hollywood Studios. Mm -hmm. um, I wish someone had told us we, you know, what, kept, what, kept what, tabs what? on. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, one ride. Mark's like, we have plenty of time. Let's get more. One ride! No. Okay, so here we are. Now we're rushed. We rushed. We were a little rushed, but we've made it. Little man went so fast. You got ready so fast. Um, but now we are on our way to Disney's Contemporary Resort. We have dinner tonight at Steakhouse 71. I hope we get like one of those like frequent like yeah. <laughs> restaurant goer punch cards. Maybe like the fourth one will be free. Who knows? Right. All right, our table is ready. Here we are again at Steakhouse 71. <laughs> Okay, already I noticed here at dinner, it is a lot dimmer in here than it was for breakfast and lunch. So it's a nice dining atmosphere for dinner. I like that. Okay, one thing that's already a little bit different is that we do have an actual menu for the cocktails, especially cocktails, non-alcoholic specialties. A lot to choose from, very cool. But the dinner menu is still the QR code. So we just sat down. What do you think of this? So I already mentioned to everybody at home that it seems dimmer in here. Oh yeah, the lights have definitely been dimmed down. So yeah, so that's nice. Yeah, we're in a different area with different seats, so you have different experiences apparently throughout the entire restaurant. Right. But as you guys know, we kind of look at the menu in advance to kind of pre-game and understand what we're going to do, right? right? So I figured out that I wanted a specialty cocktail called the Big Manhattan. Unfortunately, right when they came to the table, we're like, we apologize. The only cocktail we don't have available is the Big Ben Hat. So <laughs> now I gotta figure out what else I'm gonna do. I, the only other drink that really calls to me is what I already had for lunch, which is the Coco Boulevardier. Mm -hmm. But I kind of wanna try something else. Yeah, for sure. So our waitress tonight is Sherry, which we actually know her from yeah. Victoria and Albert. So <laughs> uh, her and her husband actually are typically a uh, duo that actually work at Victoria and Albert. So we've had them several different times. It's an amazing experience. You get them as your wait staff there. So we're excited to see her here. Uh, but she was walking us through the cocktail menu and she said it's very much inspired by Walt and Lillian. So the first drink that Big Man had was inspired by Walt because he was a huge Scotch fan. And Lillian loved uh, vodka drinks. So Mike, I think... Yep, that's what I ordered. Yeah, you ordered her drink, right? Yeah. So, and then separate to that, the other additions on the cocktail menu are going to be more focused on, you know, Mary Blair and beautiful colors and excitement and getting that overall kind of vibe within the cocktail. So we're excited before with that. For me, I ordered the raspberry gin sour, which she said was totally inspired by Mary Blair. So we'll see. So we do get these comments sometimes because we have very astute viewers. You may recognize that I'm wearing the same shirt I was wearing yesterday for lunch. That's because the outfit I had packed for tonight was very dressy. And just from being here, we realized it's not as dressy as we had originally thought. Yeah, it's a little more casual. Yeah, so. it's definitely casual in here. Um, I feel very comfortable in a short sleeve polo. Um, but I also I also see t-shirts, ball caps. So I also noticed on the website, it doesn't mention anything about a dress code, so. We should be okay. Yeah. This guy is all over the place yep. tonight. <laughs> I think we gave him way too much excitement and now he's just ready for more. So <laughs> here's hoping he slows down a bit and enjoys dinner. Okay, so already just one little bit of a miss on my opinion of this place. It's a steakhouse and they don't have any bread service. So you do have to have to pay the upcharge. So we did because Caleb loves bread to begin his meal out with. So right. we got the sea salt dusted brioche bread. It looks like it's really popular. It looks like every table has it. It looks delicious. But yeah, I think it's like $12. $12 for your bread. So we're going to do it just because, again, Caleb loves his bread. But yeah. that's just the only negative mark so far. Oh, yes. A little lily pad. Awesome. <laughs> All right. All right, here is my drink. This is the vodka gimlet, Tito's vodka, green chartreuse, seed lip garden, lime juice, simple syrup, and Minute Maid premium lemonade. She said that this was an homage to Lillian. So cool. For me, I got the raspberry gin sour. This was again the one that they said was uh, inspired by Mary Blair. So she described this as a gin cosmopolitan. So it has gin, lemon juice, raspberry, and it also is topped with a sage syrup. So that sounds pretty neat. Let's see. Mm. Oh, 
Okay, I can definitely get the Cosmopolitan vibes on this one. So it's not as sweet as the Cosmopolitan, so Mike, you might actually like this. Yeah, okay. Our appetizers just showed up. Um, to start, I have got the baby iceberg wedge salad. This is house-made blue cheese dressing, toy box tomatoes, pickled red onions, bacon, and a hard-cooked egg. This looks awesome, and I can smell the blue cheese. Yum. And for me, I got the fork and knife Caesar salad, and it looks phenomenal. The dressing and the cheese on this thing looks like it's a little bit overwhelming, but trust that there's a lot of lettuce underneath there that has nothing on it. So it's called fork and knife because they expect you to cut it yourself, which again, let's call it experience. But this looks actually really good and smells phenomenal. Oh my, this looks absolutely delicious. So this is the bread service we were talking about. This is the sea salt dusted potato brioche. She said they're using Malden sea salt, which that's very, very good. I love Malden salt. But it comes with the Steakhouse 71 butter, roasted garlic tomato spread, and it's topped with a little bit of rosemary. She said that it takes 48 hours to make because of all the, the working of the dough and the rising. So let's hope it all pays off. And little man over here is devouring his dinner before I could get some good pictures of it. But yesterday we were here, he got the PB&J chicken wings. Today we're going to go a little old school. He just got the kids cheeseburger. And we got for his sides some grapes and some sliced apples. I think he's happy. You like it? So far, my baby iceberg wedge salad is delicious. It's the perfect amount. It's got that really nice crunch that you want iceberg lettuce to have. I also have to say it's got the perfect amount of dressing. Just very, very yummy. Everything tastes super fresh, very tasty. And the other thing I like about it a lot is that it has a little bit of like a, a little bit of a kick at the very end. It's not super spicy, just a little kick. And that is perfect. And my fork and knife Caesar, I had Mike try some as well because, yeah. again, we had an amazing Caesar last night at Bull & Bear. This is really good. Now, does it contest with Bull & Bear? I don't know because that's like table side, so you have to have For like sure. that little like craft, uh, craft version of that. But the flavor's really good. The dressing's phenomenal. Right amount of dressing, just like Mike's salad over there. I generally like really like this. So what did you think about it when you tried it? I thought it was very good. I liked it yeah. a lot. And I think on yours, I think it was the bacon or something, but it had like a... Like a like a tomato jam flavor to it. Like, oh, really? Yeah. So okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe the think... onions plus the tomatoes, I don't know, or uh, bacon, I don't know. I've already said my salad's amazing. Your salad is good. The bread is really, really good. We gotta sit and talk about that. Real quick, I wanna talk about our cocktails. Oh, very nice. I love that. As I mentioned, this is the vodka gimlet. I can't recommend it. It's like, it's not balanced. It's missing a bonding element, like a right. good simple syrup to kind of bring it all together. It comes across as very tart, but not a good finish. Exactly. Same thing with mine as well. I think it's lacking that little tiny note of sweetness. It, you definitely got the sour. Right, and that's what I was going to say. Usually we don't want sweet cocktails, right. but there needs to be just a little bit of sweetness. These are pretty this. bitter, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. I'm not going to get it again. All right. So moving on from this, what mm -hmm. about the brioche? The brioche is very, very good. I love brioche, so this is awesome. And it came with a tomato garlic spread, which is good. It's got a lot of good but flavor. But you gotta dig in to get that garlic, right? You do, you gotta really get in yeah. there to get that garlic underneath. And then the butter is phenomenal. It's, I think it's whipped, so it's super soft. A lot of good flavor there, delicious. Okay. Is it worth $12 for bread service? That's hard to say because I hate the idea that bread service is $12, yeah. but it's very, very good. It I don't is. think you'll be disappointed. Yeah. What I would say is a hearty helping of bread, though. Yes. So mm -hmm. if you do do it, $12, I think is a steep price. It's like the price of right. like a lunch entree, right? So I think this would be better like maybe $8. Yeah, agree. Okay. So you know it's a good salad when you're actually willing to finish it, even though you know you have a big steak coming on its way yeah. to some sides. Like, that's how tasty the Caesar is. I'm actually really enjoying this. I always say actually, I don't mean that. Like, <laughs> like, I'm, like I'm so surprised. I'm surprised right. this is so good. But based on the Caesar that Mike had at Pizza Fari, I know Pizza Fari doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> it's the count 71, but anyhow, this is very, very good. And you know, frankly, I keep on going back to the bread. It's it's very it's good. Really yeah. Good. Like the bread on its own is very tasty, and they give you these awesome like the whipped butter and this like garlic tomato jam thing on top of it. it really enhances it quite a bit. For sure. For eight dollars, I think it would be. Yeah. It's very hot. 
not, but go, careful. Yeah, don't, don't touch grass. Thank you. I tried that. Yes, you can try some, but I think the plate's a little hot. Dinner just showed up. I have the six ounce filet mignon. I had it cooked medium rare. And with your entree, you do get to choose one sauce and one side. For my side, I got the au gratin potatoes. I keep wanting to call it the potato stack, but it's called the au gratin potatoes. And then for my sauce, I got the au poivre sauce, which is basically like a black peppercorn sauce. And then what do you have? So I have the eight ounce tenderloin medallions, and they come in two, that's why they're called medallions. And if you look really closely, it might look like a heart, but I think if you squint really hard, it might actually look like a hidden Mickey. We'll see. It kind of looks like it. <laughs> Thank you. And for my side, I ordered the mac and cheese because everybody knows Mike has to get mac and cheese anywhere it's offered. <laughs> so this side is not for me, it's actually for my oh, and for him. So we're pretty excited. And for my sauce, I got the red wine sauce. Like I said, if you kind of turn this around just a bit and you really squint, it kind of looks like a hidden Mickey, so it looks great. There's the mac and cheese. I'm sorry, this restaurant has some shadows right uh, underneath me, so I'm trying to show you the meal as best as I possibly can. Okay, I do have to say, and I, now that I see this through the viewfinder, it actually looks a lot more pink on camera than it does in person. But I did take a bite of it. I'm a little disappointed because I did order this medium rare, and this feels more like medium to me. Like I said, it looks pinker on the video, but in real life, it's pretty brown. But don't let my critique dissuade you from Steakhouse 71, because apparently we have a tale of two steaks going on here. That's right, and I tried mine, and I immediately had like a wow moment. Like, this is right. a phenomenal steak. <laughs> I tried it without the sauce and with the sauce. The red wine sauce is phenomenal. I think it's really great. I actually want to try Mike's op Wop. Okay. I look over at Mike's, and he's like chewing, and he's just like, <laughs> sad chewer. He looked at me, he's like, oh, wow, we're having two different experiences. Right, <laughs> for sure. So I, apparently we, we definitely highly recommend this one. Yes, so I took a bite of it. Steve is right. It is delicious, it the is. one he has. It's very tender, a lot of good flavor there. Yeah. It's almost like a butter-enriched steak. Like it's so velvety and a lot of flavor in it. So yeah. I love it. But, all right, so Mike just tried the mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on it? It's really, really good. I like it a lot. Um, it is kind of like a classic preparation, but it's feel, it seems like they have like a cheese dusting on top of it. Not breadcrumbs, but more of a cheese dusting. It's really good. I like it a lot. So, you remember when we were at Narcusi's and we had their mac and cheese and you said like it tasted very floury? Like they didn't mix it right, they didn't do the bechamel oh, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. So, I have to admit, I don't agree with Mike. I do get a, a strong flour flavor in this mac and cheese. You do in this one? Yes. Oh, wow. I do not. Okay. Take another bite, just okay. to see if you, now that you have that nose. Yes. Here we go. Now that you said that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe a little, maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's a but little, I, it's, I, it's like a hint there. Like, it's just like lingers. Right, it's not nearly as bad as that night at Marcusi's. But I do have to say, I almost like this mac and cheese more than California Grill. Okay. I've never been impressed with California Grill's mac and cheese. So. And we all know that Mike has his numbers on mac, mac and cheese. <laughs> you need to trust his rating everywhere. Every time. Yes. And we decided since I basically reviewed Steve's side, he's going to review mine. Again, this is the au gratin potatoes. So let's see what he thinks. This is the way to go. Yeah, it's really, good. It's so good. If I'm being like very nitpicky, there's like one like thick potato in there, like oh, that really? was not cooked all the way, but everything else was, was put on. So, okay. Um, the flavors on top almost taste like all the fixings for like a baked potato. Right. Like is it sour cream? Yeah, sour cream, chives, a little bit of cheese. You can taste all the butter. This is really good. Yeah. And it, I don't want to say that this place is completely copying Steakhouse 55, but Steakhouse 55 had an amazing potato stack. Yeah. And this definitely reminds me of that. So. Not a complete co copy, but we also think the dessert's gonna be a complete copy, but we'll get there, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. If you're trying to decide between mac and cheese and the au gratin potatoes, oh, yes. I would go with the potatoes. Au gratin potato, yeah, 100%. Definitely. No, no doubt, no contest. <laughs> get out of here. No, this is the way to go. Oh Caleb, what is this? Chocolate sauce, chocolate chip, vanilla ice cream, and it's a little sweet to enjoy it. You can make it table size. Oh, Whoa. You're so excited. No, please. Dress it up good. Want sprinkles? 
I do have to say, I appreciate our server because I feel like she kind of whispered to you as to whether or not he could have this or not. Yeah, because he's been saying, I, I need my meal, I need dessert. <laughs> and she like, kind of pulled me over in the corner and just said, we could do something and something like this, you want it? Like, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> so look at this. We got two steaks here. They look almost identical. It is completely different. I'm in heaven right now because Steve let me finish his steak. The medallions are the way to go. I cannot hammer that point enough. They taste so different, but Steve's, it, it just slices like butter. Oh my gosh, delicious. All right, so this is day three of the restaurant opening, and we've been here every single day. Yeah. Day one, day two, day three. And I'll admit, on day three, I think the service is definitely picked oh, up. Oh yeah, for sure. The timing of the meals coming out is definitely improved. So overall, they're figuring out their groove, and they're getting into their routine. I'm, I'm turning into a big fan of this place. Absolutely. Steakhouse 71, our Jack Daniels infused chocolate cake with raspberry sauce. And look, 24 karat gold flake. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. And here it is, and let's be honest, you knew I was gonna get this. It's the Steakhouse 71 chocolate cake. It's Jack Daniels infused chocolate cake. And our server let us know. We've got some gold leaf here so you can have your gold and eat it too. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. But it is very reminiscent of the cake that was at Steakhouse 55. Right. right. How many layers was that one? That was pretty incredible. I don't remember. Incredible. I thought it was I, like 20 something. I was going to say, I think it was 22. Yeah. But I, from my understanding, I read online that this is 15 layers to represent the 15 floors of the Contemporary Resort. Of so. course, because that's what Imagineers do. They right. Figure it out, so. <laughs> So I can't wait for you to try this. I'm pretty sure you're gonna love it. Yeah, let's dig in. We should we should have filmed the first bite, but All right. I couldn't wait, and neither could Caleb. So, but yeah, that good. This is so delicious. It is a very moist cake. It is not dry at all. I don't pick up too much of the whiskey, um, which is probably good for you. Right. It, it is. It's delicious. All right, Steve's gonna try it out now. Let's get it. Let's get that really good shot. It's a very good chocolate cake. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, it's delicious. And the top layer has a like ganache flavor to it. Yeah. So very delicious. I, I will admit, like, I'm, I'm trying to search for that whiskey flavor. Yeah. So this doesn't hit you as like a whiskey cake, so don't let that scare you away. I don't order it because you want a bourbon right. That's not flavored this cake. cake right? Yeah, but if you like a really rich, decadent chocolate cake, this is the way to go. Absolutely. Now Mike ate all the gold, so he didn't leave any for me. Who's <laughs> surprised about that? I'm not. So. <laughs> The other thing is, as you can see, it is absolutely enormous. So I think even though we are sharing this and Caleb's having a few bites, I, this is definitely something you'll want to package up and take back to the room. Yeah. So I think maybe later tonight, we'll nibble on this, pop open some champagne, heaven. Or in the morning with a nice cup of coffee. That too, yes. absolutely. All right, I did it. I finished the entire cake. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Lies. We got it boxed to go. It's so, so good, oh my gosh. But I want to mention also something. They had some raspberries, Caleb ate all those. But they had some raspberry business on the side. I'm not a big fan of the mixture of raspberry and chocolate, so I like that they put it on the side and not like inside the cake or on top of the cake, so. Mike is very, I don't want, not vanilla, just chocolate, not his chocolate cake. <laughs> I just want chocolate. Yes, that's chocolate, all you chocolate, want. chocolate. Nothing else, don't put any strawberry on there. Don't add any like yeah. jam in there. That's <laughs> blasphemy. For don't me. ruin it. So, Caleb was a good boy. He ate his dinner. Yes. So. Bribery is a great tool. <laughs> <laughs> Bribery is a fantastic parenting tool. One of the tips we'll give each of you. Oh my gosh. We said if he had a great dinner, he would get dessert. If he was good throughout the whole dinner, we'll go on some more rides. Yes. And here we are delivering on our promises. So we are now walking to Magic Kingdom. We're gonna go hit up a few rides for little man. Yeah. Yeah. Not long though. Well, we had this debate earlier. So it's seven o'clock, 7.20 here. And bedtime for a little man at home is 7.30. Mm -hmm. But we are only two nights away from traveling back home. So right. it might be good that we stretch them a bit to just get back to that Arizona time zone. Right. I have to say, I hate to deliver disappointing news, but I did see some of the comments. Um, some of you were interested in what we thought of the new fireworks show and the projections. 
we are not big firework people, but only, not that we don't like them. It's just that we're usually out of the park and back into our hotel room before that even starts because we have to be back for Caleb's bedtime. Yeah, yeah. But every now and again, like for special events, I'll take Caleb back and Michael yeah. stay back. Yeah, every once in a while. Like yeah. Halloween stuff, like, yeah. but Frank, oh, yeah. have you seen the new light oh, on the yeah. monorail? Is that the monorail, bud? So they installed <laughs> this like under track lighting. It looks awesome. It looks cool. <laughs> so you heard Caleb, dad, dad, dad. <laughs> he, wanted to, he wanted to show us the monorail. Yes. Dad, dad, dad. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. I love you too. <laughs>